Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Ironwood Brunch. So today is a special day. Today marks our first tournament of our monthly circuit called the Warden's Ironwood Gauntlet, or TWIG for short. So today, it is our uh, first qualifiers for this month, and uh, we have about 100 plus players right now. And uh, yeah, so this is our first qualifier for the month of December 2018. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Twig, we will explain what Twig is. But before that, let us introduce ourselves, especially our special guest today, uh, Da Wei Zero Tang. Now, some of you may already know him, especially you know uh, if you guys follow Dota and all that uh, in C. So he is an affiliate of. Prime Life Entertainment, which is a channel that does coverage and commentaries for esports in the sea. Uh, he's a professional Dota 2 caster, an esports event organizer, manager of Team High Ground, and Red Bull content creator, former senior editor, and the list goes on and on and on. <laughs> he's also a gamer, uh, so with some professional achievements, namely in Dota 2, StarCraft 2, uh, Heroes of the Storm as well, and even CSGO, and many, many more. So instead of me going on and on about him, let the man speak for himself. So Dawei, how about you say a few words and introduce yourself? Hey guys, that's a very long introduction. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, welcome to the first uh, the Warden's I would Gauntlet, where we will be watching what, what was it hundred over I think almost hundred players. Yeah, it was, uh, it's almost full. But I think some players are offline, so we will have to kick them soon. So about hundred ish players right now. Yeah awesome turnout for for the first qualifiers and i just can't wait to see what all these people have you know yeah have brought up for us in the any first janky round. meme decks any janky yeah. rainbow decks we'll any see. blue decks would be very interesting because drafting blue decks is a very difficult on its own but uh yeah let's let's see what all of these people have brought up for us yep all right now js introduce yourself so uh, what i am a close beta player so, so people have from people in Reddit has been complaining the unfair advantage that close beta player have over uh, the <laughs> the rest of the people. Uh, I think, in to a certain extent, it's true. But I think uh, there's as long as you spend enough time, the skill gap will eventually close up. Uh, I think it's not that not that big of a advantage. So I played like about 100 hours in the close beta. I'm one of the last waves of the close beta in whites. And I think by now you have almost 300 hours. Nah, right? I, since, the, since the game uh, released, we have been uh, quite occupied with uh, the Ironwood Brunch content. Yep. So, and around another 100 hours, so maybe 200 hours up, up till now. Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. And I am the other JS here, so he is <laughs> YJS, I'm actually LJS. As you can see, my uh, my handle is LJS. Sounds like LJS. So I'm not uh, especially. I don't. I I didn't play artifact all that much. So these two guys here probably might have even played more than me. You know, I, I think Darwin probably played more than me already. JS is sort of the expert drafter, so he can give a lot more insight into drafting, which is today's tournament. And uh, yeah, so I have. You know, played some card games in the past. I'm generally a more casual player, so I'll probably be more of the fun kind of guy talking about you know all these games. So that's enough about us. Now let's talk about Twig. So for those of you who do not know yet, okay, Twig, which is called the Warden's Ironwood Gauntlet, is something that we are gonna run every single month, right? So um, every month it will consist of weekly Saturday qualifiers, which will begin at this time every Saturday, and Essentially, the top 16 players of each week will be given points according to their uh, ranks. And at the end of the month, on the final Sunday of the month, we will invite the top 8 players into what is known as the Twig Invitationals, where we know the winners will be crowned the Twig Ancients as well as the Twig Treants for our Discord group. So if you haven't joined our Discord group, please join it as well. So. Um, Currently, that is our structure. So I want to highlight something. Uh, this structure might change. So December is our pilot month. 
and we might change certain things as we learn and go, but this is how it runs right now. Now, how about the prices? As for the prices for um, Twig, uh, we have what is known as a donation pool from you guys, the community. So we want to embody the philosophy of from the community for the community, right? So the way this works is that every month we will collect donations from all of you guys, all of you kind souls out there, and this donation pool will become the price for the next Twig month. For example, what you see on screen now is our current pool uh, for the month of January. So this pool will last throughout the whole of December, and whatever we collected will become the prize pool for January. Now, this prize pool will then be divided among the top three players of each week's Twig qualifiers. Now, why are we, the reason we are doing this is because we want it to be something that you know every one of you look forward to each week, kind of like Friday Night Magic. If for those of you who are familiar with Magic: The Gathering, and uh, this also gives everyone a chance to win something, you know, whether it be someone casual or whether it be someone hardcore, and um, yeah, so we want you know all of you guys to be able to look for look forward to something at the end of the week. As for the prizes for the Twig Invitational winners, uh, at this point in time, we will be giving you the special title in Discord for one month, uh, more for our namesake, but we do plan to add prizes in the future as uh, we sort of sort out the logistics, as we sort out the details uh, in the future months. So now that you guys know all this, uh, if any of you guys, any of you kind souls are feeling generous, uh, please do donate and contribute. Uh, we have a link below uh, or on somewhere as well, and in the Twitch description as well. Or if you go to our chat, you can type in exclamation mark donate. We'll show you the link. And uh, you know, if you are, so do help contribute to all this pull the money together and we can you know, give and support this tournament. Uh, we will give credit to all of you guys who donate uh, in shout outs during um, periods where we are not casting, as well as maybe our regular weekly shows. We also have the alerts and announcements. Um, and uh, so for this month of Twig, technically we don't have any prizes or donations, but we are lucky that this week we have $10 Steam credit, which will be the prize for today's champion and a few of you guys from discord are generous enough you have, uh, some of you guys have approached us with prizes so over the next few weeks our qualifier number two three and even maybe four we will probably have prizes as well so do stay tuned for the announcement yeah and uh, that's about it for twig and if you guys have any questions do let us know in the uh, chat we'll be answering you hopefully and uh, yeah <laughs> right cool so right now, everyone is drafting, I think. Uh, let's, check, let's check in with the progress. Yeah, there's 20, 29 more players uh, to register their deck. All right, cool. And uh, we will start in about five minutes once everyone is done. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it for Twig. If you guys have any questions, do let us know in the, in the chat and we'll try to answer you. And also do try to join our um, our Discord and join the community. Anyways, uh, Tawe, yeah. so you are from the Artifact MOBA, also known as Dota 2. <laughs> you are quite deep in that, and that's where you are expert in. But you know, I've, I've heard that you've just started out uh, uh, Artifact not too long ago. So, so far, what are your thoughts in terms of this card game? You know, uh, compare, let's say, compare this to Hearthstone. I mean, just because that's probably the only card game you play, right? Yeah, I, uh, I, I played Hearthstone since, uh, since it's beta mode, so uh, I've been playing for a lot of years. Uh, Dota 2 even, even longer, also in the beta mode. So uh, what brought me to Artifact, which was released last week, uh, was it last week? I forgot the exact date, but I've, I've put 70 hours in it so far. Uh, the mechanics are really interesting. Uh, for all those, player, all those people still looking to get into, her, uh, to get into Artifact, there's like three lanes. Uh, lo a lot of the general trading card game uh, mechanics still exist. There's stuff like, uh, you know, combo decks. There's stuff like going face. It's the same in Hearthstone. It's the same here. So uh, if you're, yeah, if you're if you're <laughs> a Hearthstone, if you're a card game fan, uh, I think uh, this is a uh, something natural to move on to. But if you're not, you might be a handful when you first start into the game for sure. Exactly. This is like a really complicated game. Yeah. Even those people, you know, those of you guys who play card games, you know, like, like, like even the OG Magic Gathering, 
mm -hmm. uh, this is still something you know that takes a while to get across because of the three lanes. So so far, what have you been doing on Artifact that way? Smashing uh, ladder. Uh, I've been playing a lot of uh, constructed, uh, expert play, uh, especially, especially uh, it's mostly constructed decks. I I'm not that good in draft. I played a bit of a uh, phantom draft as well, but it's mostly in an uh, expert, uh, playing the uh, constructed decks, playing testing out you know the different kind of decks, playing uh, red black, uh, econ decks, control decks, trying to see. Uh, at least so far, before people start nerfing <coughs> Bounty Hunter, uh, what other <laughs> changes that can be made? Uh, Call the X. Nerf X. <coughs> Nerf not X, yet. Wait, wait till I sell it first. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think I think even if they do let him nerf, even at the from two armor to one armor or whatever, I think he's still he's still probably gonna be very powerful. Yeah, that, that that was the only nerf that I could think of that would make not make the card completely useless, but then. Uh, make it less of a popular card. That was the only thing I could think of. And right, a, the armor, right. Another card that uh, might uh, have experienced nerf is the cheating death. The you, you, yes, cheating death. death. Yeah, oh, people, cheating death. Yeah. People have, have been complaining about the card like <laughs> since day one. Too much RNG, man. It's like, it's like we talked about it before as well. Even, uh, even before the open beta started, we had our discussions about the cards. And we were saying how, like, you know, Cheating Death is one of those cards where if it procs, you are, if you are the player that it procs for you, you are happy. But if it doesn't proc for you, you'll be angry. Then the, if whoever you're playing against, if it doesn't proc, you'll be happy. If it procs, you'll be angry. It's one of those, one of, it's one of those cards where it just doesn't feel good. So I, I don't know. I feel that, you know, uh, RNG has its place in card games. But blatant RNG is something that most people don't like, especially if you look in Hearthstone. Uh, like in the past, you know, a uh, few tournaments. I think back, even back in All Gods Meta, when Yorksaron was a thing, people mm. were really upset that you know the game became a coin flip of y yeah. Yorksaron. So uh, I think in any card game, there will always be variants, and that's where you know uh, skilled players know how to navigate the variances. But yeah, so I think Shining Death has to get the axe. Okay, see what I did there? <laughs> yeah. yeah, chat was saying may, may, maybe uh, Xerox, far where you can uh, up your volume up a little my bit. volume? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and about cheating death, I think the problem with it, it's like, uh, it's, it's kind of against the team of the RNG in Artifact, where they champion the idea of small RNGs where you can outplay the RNGs. Yes. While cheating death is straight up a coin flip. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. 50%. So, that's why I agree. RNG is still important because it, it's able to distinguish good players from the poor players. Because good players are able to navigate and you know calculate probabilities in their head. And that's where you know we can see good players versus bad players. But you know, blatant RNG is I think not healthy for any competitive game. Yeah. And... Yeah. And someone in chat says that <laughs> cheating that that death works hundred percent of the time for my opponent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, like like I say, you know, hundred percent of the time it works fifty percent of the time. Yeah, it, it cost me a game today when uh when I was uh, I used annihilation and then his uh Sora Khan didn't die. And, and another of his I forgot another stupid buffed up he, uh hero didn't die, it was like doing thirty damage to my face, so yeah. Yeah, so, yeah so, so so uh, one uh, interesting point about cheating death is uh, a lot of players uh, tend to like to put cheating death to save like uh, one or two units, right? But the most yeah. effective of the use of cheating death is actually on a very wide board where mm -hmm. you, 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 you use that to play uh, around a board clear, like, like Tao said, Annihilation. Yeah, you, you, you basically uh, you maximize the, 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 effectiveness. the effectiveness of the coin yeah. flips. The more the more you did you have the the more coin flips you are going to win. If not all, yeah. <laughs> if well, well, if you all. if you win all, then you just you know, RNG Jesus loves you. Maybe you afraid to RNG Jesus enough. Yeah, I think there was yeah, a clip. Uh, there was a clip in Discord where uh, four targets of uh, like units that were supposed to die survive because of cheating death. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there's this clip of this guy, you know, who's just slaying slay one, survive. Play two, survive. Then I think he played uh, some other board players, survive, survive. And the guy was like, <laughs> triggered. <laughs> he's just trying to, yeah, it's just, it's just funny.
So yeah, I think I think Ching Death probably needs to be changed. So I don't know. I I've been looking through Reddit uh, recently as well about impressions of artifact, and the thing is, artifact numbers has been going down since release. Uh, hopefully, it stabilizes because a lot of people are saying how you know artifact feels like an incomplete game. You know, it's like, um, you know, yeah, you create, it feels like the creators are trying to create a complex game with all kinds of ideas thrown into it at once. Where you have so many things going on, you know, and it, it feels like it's not as tuned or as you know, uh, uh, optimized. I think I think even I think uh, Hearthstone they had this. They, someone mentioned before one of the dev devs mentioned before that they actually went through a lot of iterations with Hearthstone where they throw a lot of ideas and then they mm. throw out things that didn't fit. That's why Hearthstone right now is very focused. They have a very core focus, uh, I guess, mechanic. Whereas I think Artifact is filled with a lot of things. So a lot of people felt that you know, it has a lot of good ideas. But it hasn't been polished very well. You know, you have a lot of heroes that doesn't feel balanced. You have a lot of things that feel off balance. So hopefully, you know, Artifact uh, Valve can fix this up. All right. So the drafting it, time should be over. Yeah. Kick the uh, kick. In, the kicking begins. Uh, the mods are kicking yep. the players and. Yep. So we have players who are offline. So the mods will start kicking. All right. And, and, time. And, and one oh. remark that I like to make about the game is uh. As much people say that uh, it's very hard to pick up, but for me, I feel uh, it. The game mechanics is relatively simple. Uh, you kind of get a good hang of uh, how the game works, like the simple mechanics, the lanes, and uh, the, your, you, how how do you trade your unit, how do you attack uh, in like two games or so. Uh, the the hard part is the depth of the strategy, which which is uh, very discouraging for a lot of new players. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe maybe my first draft I got Drow Chen and Luna and uh, <laughs> and uh, I won, <laughs> so it kind of it's kind of encouraging. Well, if if you if your first game you face again like someone with X, Drow Ranger, it's it's gonna be very uh, demotivating. Yeah, that's the thing about uh, card games, right? Like the starting board can define the entire game. Like uh, you, you face all three of your heroes face <laughs> up against their 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 red or black heroes, and when you're bling, when you are uh, when you are green or blue, and then suddenly you start off with absolutely nothing to do. Uh, it's rare, right. but these situations do happen. Uh, this, the yeah, game I think the game's already started. Okay. Yep. So let's let's yeah. tune into something. Yeah, oh, by the way, yes. Uh, I think someone mentioned that uh, apparently the uh, uh, game volume is a little bit too high. Chat, okay. okay, guys on Twitch chat, let us know if it, if the uh, Volume is not okay. Okay. Uh, okay. We'll head into the game. Yep. Let's head into the game, and so, we'll start, uh, we'll uh, randomly cast someone. So let's see how we do. So you know what? Uh, let's just look at the the one on the on the top. Uh, Nesco versus T W R W Mum. T W R W Mum. What kind yeah, of you, game is that? You guys see that? So let's yeah, let's yeah. let's watch that one. Okay. okay, so interesting. T R W Mom has a green black deck. Oh, a triple? Is that a triple? No, it's not. It's, it's two the two, two Debbies. Two Debbies. Oh, I thought it was a triple P A. Oh, I scared me for a moment. And then Nazgul has a black red deck. Well, black red is normally the safe route to go in drafts. Uh, Bristle deck. Ifis, then Debbie and ooh, sniper. Nice. So the the deck tracker is not working. Uh, for the game when it's a first turn, that's a it's a spectator part where, in the first turn where you can't do when the players has not done anything, uh, you can't really navigate around. Uh, but I it, it's available now. I can see the deck. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. All right. I was wondering why I couldn't press <laughs> check the other lanes, but okay. Yeah, like like for some reason spectator spectator mode they have a bit of bug where when you first go in it, you can't do anything. It just freezes for a moment. But now it's fine. So let's look at let's look at their flops. So the flop is looking uh, good for Nazgul. Uh, yeah. In the second lane, it's, it's a trade for the Debbie, and uh, in the ter third lane, it's a it's a win for for Nazgul. the the Sven. the Sven. Although in uh, Mum's Mum's hand, I'm just going to call him Mum. Uh, there's no accident. So the thing yeah. about Debbie is, uh, com Debbie combined combined with his signature card, uh, no accident. It's essentially a twelve damage. Uh, first turn, it trades against almost any heroes in the game. So, so we can imagine in lane three the no the hammer is going to come on yep. this one and it's definitely trade. 
So Sven will be dead. Oh, Grading Shot, lane 1. That's an interesting line of play. I think he just wants to kill, but... I don't really like that play, because uh, yeah. you know that Skull is going to get gold this turn, yeah, uh, which exactly. means uh, there will be counter play for the exactly. battle lane. I would rather... Because the thing, the, th the thing about Grading Shot is that it, because it is cross lane, it's such a good card, you ideally want to use it to guarantee a kill, not just deal damage, because you know people can always just react to it, especially if you go left. You know, yeah. you go off lane. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the the best part about what? uh grazing shot Turn is one disciple. That's interesting. Why didn't he just go for no accident? Yeah. I think he wants to save that for more value. Yeah, least. but I, I, I disagree with this play. Like no normally what you want to do is you want to disciple for a final push, a big lane push. If not, you just waste it. Yeah, like uh, Disciple is more of a tempo kind of drop, right? Exactly. When you want to take control of the board, but yeah. Yeah. Not, that, not the most efficient play, I think. Yeah, both line of play is fine, uh, but I think no accident might be better. Uh, it's hard yeah. to say. Both has equal value. Both allows you to uptrade. Yeah, fair uh, enough. Disciple has uh, more value uh, late game-wise, uh, while exactly. no accident uh, kind of fall off uh, as the game progress. Yeah, it's true. All right, so now... Uh, but I wonder where they'll be deploy. So let, let's look at uh, their decks. So which which one that you guys think is a, is a better deck here? Hard to say. Hard to say. Uh, um, Nazgul has Helm. Helm. The thing so about Helm, yeah, does he run Payday? He's run Payday. He has Payday 1, only 1 though, and only 1 gold mine. So, but he, he, so he, has, he has no Bounty Hunter and only 1 mine, 1 Payday. So I'm thinking it, you know, he's probably not likely to be able to afford that. So I do, I do question his choice of putting such a high cost item in his deck. Um, on the other hand, Sweet Mom's deck has pretty basic, uh, yeah, it's basic equipment. I think, I think Mom's deck uh, is more refined. Uh, yeah, it looks more refined to me, yeah, you're right. And Nazgul has 12 items. Uh, I'm not, sh not too sure about that. Yeah, I disagree with playing too much items. Okay, I feel that you know, especially in draft, when things are clunky, you want your deck to be efficient. Okay, let's look at this turn. Uh, so it's a good turn for Nasco. Uh, well, well, Mom's can kill the Omni Knight. Uh, I'll, I'll probably just do it here. Uh, this is you cloak and healing staff saves your Bristol back. Uh, save your Omni Knight from the Bristol back. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and this, this this comes again to what you said just now about uh about being able to against the uh the grazing shot where like you see he just healed up the exactly. back. yeah so he exactly. just so how i usually like to use grazing shot is to set up upkeep kills yeah especially from upstream to downstream mm -hmm. so the term upstream downstream meaning uh you play from the left lane which is the priority lane to the, the lanes on the right so essentially shut shuts the heroes down uh in future on, lanes yeah in future lanes for two combat phase yeah so upstream, wait, correct me if I'm wrong. Upstream means to, yeah. towards the right, is it? You, you, upstream is left, so you, you shoot downstream. Oh, sorry, yes. So you, okay, from upstream to downstream. Yeah. That way you can, uh, yeah. So what you, what you do is, so the concept of upkeep kill is that you want to kill, when a hero dies, they are locked out, lock, locked out of a round before they come back. But if you're able to kill them before the action phase of the current turn, you essentially lock them up for additional turn. So ideally what you want to do is all this cross lane damage, like you know, uh, uh, the grazing shot, and uh, I think what other cards is uh, but Re Revengeance, I can't remember the name. Essentially what you can do is you can kill heroes before the action phase, which essentially denies them of the color. And uh, earlier the way he used the, you know, the shot doesn't seem to be that good or efficient to me. Yeah, so, right? yep. And this lane draw is in a safe position, so I like this. I like this deployment. Uh, you can you always want to put draw uh, in a lane where she is relatively safe. Yep. That way you can abuse her passive. So those of you who are not aware, her passive is uh, Precision Aura, which gives everything, okay, all units in all lanes, and, and, and additional one damage, which is a huge thing, especially if you have a whiteboard. Interesting play though, coming from uh, Nazgul. He used Payday on 4 gold, so he doubled it to 9. <laughs> uh, yeah, not too sure but I guess, that. I guess he has no other way to really generate uh, a con. He has like uh, one 
Iron Fork Gold Mine, but that's about it. But that's the thing, you know, like he's running a deck with uh, Helm of Dominator. And if he's, he's just using Payday for such a small game, he's probably never going to be able to use Helm. Unless, of course, the game goes really, really long. Okay, so he's putting Debbie left. Double red, right. I disagree. I, will, I, will, I think I'll put at least one red mid to contest against uh, Drow. The draw injury, right? Yeah. Exactly. That's He's just leaving Drow up, and, and that's, not, that's not good. Although, Mom put double Debbie left. I'm also not very... Uh, I, I also disagree with this. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm actually okay with this play, uh, because uh, first lane is the priority lane, especially when you have Sniper. Uh, if you win the first lane, uh, which means on turn seven uh, you can play the assassinate yeah, downstream. You can assassinate through. Uh, you can you can protect your lanes to your right. Uh, even even better. Yeah. So by the way, I, I tried I tried I tried a sniper the other day as well, and my gosh, assassinate is such a good card. Like like I think what what Jay has mentioned, doing a cross lane kill or from upstream to downstream is really good. And especially assassinate, you can always just kill and kill and kill heroes from left to right, which is so good. You just deny them every single turn. Yeah. Pierce's oh, yeah. armor means that uh, armor wouldn't won't save you. It's just uh, a lot of red a lot of red heroes have a uh, really high armor. Bristleback, Tidehunter, Axe. Exactly. So I think this deployment war, I think it kind of favors uh Mumps. Yeah. yeah. Because Draw is it. uncontested. Exactly. And he's he is winning the first lane. Mm-hmm. And looking at Drow's hand, uh, Mom's hand, uh, he has a very, very powerful late game card coming, uh, the Thunder yep. Knight, uh, which can which can be dropped on the first lane since he's winning the first lane. Yeah. Yeah, and nothing much happening in the second lane. I would have I would have rather uh, uh Nazgul uh, put either Sven or uh or me. Meep, what's his name? Kifi, sorry, in mid. No, that, that, that's a Mazzy. Mazzy. Sorry, not Kifi, Mazzy, my bad. Yeah. Ah, all these names, I keep forgetting names. Yeah. <coughs> so bad with names. And the thing putting three heroes on the right, uh, it kind of locks. Yeah, uh, exactly. Locks uh, Dasko's mana to be able to play them efficiently. Exactly. So he, essentially, he wasted his mid, mid lane mana, which is five mana wasted. Yeah, and, and, and you look at his, his, his hand, uh, the red, he has two cross lane cards, which can which should ideally you want it to be played as, as early as possible. Exactly. Uh, Steel reinforcement and burning oil. So if I'm not go, I'll let the sniper die here because your sniper is kind of stranded. So the I think the right play here is to not to heal the sniper and let sniper die. All right, yep. all right. So that's so what he did. That's exactly what he did. If you heal the sniper, you are essentially stranding your heroes on one lane. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, sometimes you want to move them around so that you can access colors in different lanes. Just, just like how, you know, he was locked out of red in both lane 1 and lane 2 because of his deployment right. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so the creep deployment, I guess it favors both of them because it's pushing the lane they want to push. <laughs> oh, the <laughs> mid lane though for, for the start of mom. Exactly. So much damage. So I, I think Nazgul should definitely have deployed a hero, at least one hero mid, because now it's just going to go un uncontested. And especially with draw ranges, uh, uh, passive, constantly buffing everything. Yeah. You know, and, the, and the arrows for the first lane, so good for Nazgul. <laughs> yeah, uh, good for Nazgul. Yeah. I guess he, he high rolled it. <laughs> and look at what, what uh, Mom's bot has bought a golden ticket. Let's see. Oh, let's see what it gets. Or... Oh, yeah. It's a <laughs> Jasper Daggers? dagger. Okay, it's not bad. It's not the worst. It's not the worst. That's a, thing. Bad, that's a bad roll. I think. Uh, uh, well, gold ticket is 10. 10, right? Golden ticket. Yeah, 10. Uh, 9. 9. Yeah. Nine. So, yeah, nine. you spend 9 for 7. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's why okay. I don't gamble. He that's has Pierce gamble, against. He has Pierce against Bristleback and a Sven. So, it's okay. It's not the worst. It could, it could, be, it could have been worse. Uh, yeah. True, true, true. And there, there's this true. bronze legionnaire here that has armor. <laughs> yeah. I think I think this uh, this arrow deployment isn't good for either of them because it's like the bronze legionnaire is attacking Omni Knight and both the heroes are attacking the creep. <laughs> what a way to damage! This is sometimes uh, what you call the hero creep, right? Thanks. This happened in. Uh, I'm sure you have faced this kind of creep in some exactly. some it's of your games. Exactly. It's just so annoying. It's like, hey, I got all my heroes gonna attack your tower. 
<laughs> no, my little creep is distracting you. It's like, come on, guys, attack! Don't be distracted by the creep. Right. So, is am I seeing double double stage reinforcement in the middle lane? Yes, he did. Yeah. Yes. So, a previous turn, uh, Nasgul so played. He had casted two in a row. Yes. So okay. la uh, la last last turn on the lane three, he casted the uh, burning wall on lane one and the armor on lane uh, two. Yeah, so okay. I guess mid lane is done. That's mid lane exactly, is done. Exactly lethal. Yeah, exactly. Which is a good move. I didn't notice that. Yeah, exactly lethal. And so now I think it's just going to push left. Yeah, and yeah, the upcoming turn is... I think the game is far from over because of the steel reinforcement. Uh, yeah. Mid lane is going to not push as fast. And you look at Nazguhan, he has one more steel reinforcement. Coming. <laughs> And he has three heroes deployed next turn. So if he deploy them right, he can definitely defend and come back from this. Yeah, so if I just go here, I'll probably play a God Strength. Uh, God Strength or Poison Strength right will, will, will uh, on Swen, uh, will turn the clock for the third lane to two turns instead of three turns. Uh, which is very important because you are facing an AD pressure on the second lane. Yeah, exactly. So and now he, but he played, he, but he, instead, he, instead he played uh, more still reinforcement. reinforcement. On the I don't think you need to keep doing that because... Uh, which like, is fair, which is fair. I mean, fine, but it's like... You know... Uh, and now it's taking him away. Uh, okay. I'm not too sure about this play. Uh, I, because the right I, lane is not... It's not, it's not win yet. It's not won yet for, for Nasco. Exactly. You know, he, he should definitely put pressure on the right lane. And because he has three heroes next turn, he can, de he can definitely defend uh, left or even mid, mid. So, yeah, I don't know. I feel he might just do red, black, red, black. I think that's what he'll do. Oh, double red front. Interesting. He's, he's all inning on the, on the left lane right now. <laughs> I think this is a losing oh. play. Yeah, that, that's, that's okay, I think. Yeah. I think this is a losing play because uh, oh. he's just winning one lane and and. If you kill wow. your opponent's heroes, it enables them to redeploy to the right lane. Exactly. But the thing is, like, I mean, the the he should not have TP, uh, giving up lane three. He should have continued pushing it. But given the state that he's in with all four heroes, I think. I don't know. This is a bit of a. Yeah, strange. but he can has can can have an alternate win condition by uh, racing down the ancient at at the first lane. Uh. I don't think he has a chance because he, 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 he definitely has, has a chance. It's right? a huge gust. Yeah, that's, this is a huge gust. This, this is why exactly. uh, uh, this is a, a game losing play. And you are playing against a, a draw ranger. Yeah, so. Yeah. You I, don't know, I, think, I, think, I think mom is favorite. Yeah, definitely. You know, and especially since his hand has late game cards and a lot of inter uh, questionable, questionable plays by Nazgul. Yeah, and you look at. Uh, Mom's deck. You have he has three never more disciple of never more, which means uh, eighty potential is re is real is real. Yeah, exactly. So at, at any time, if he draws his uh, never more, he can just eighty push mid. Yeah, although we have the steel enforcement that slow down uh, quite a decent amount. I don't think it slow down enough. It's only yeah, fair enough. Huh? three per. Yeah, this three is unit. three, three, this is like, that's six unit, that's like 18 damage. Yeah, two, two, two. Two, two, two. Okay, so, 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 Nasco has no play. He can't even heal any of his dying hero. Huh. He put exactly. the cloak on, uh, on Mazzy. On Mazzy, which is not dying, yeah. right? Yeah, he just wasted his double black. Now he doesn't have access to black at all. He can't even, he can't even assassinate anymore. Set life, set life. So, yeah. Is, is there any outs for Nasgu? Like, can he all in on the right lane? I don't think so. I, 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 lo looking at our, the left lane, it's at 9 health. Thanks to Bristol back. I think Nasgu can redeploy to the right. He needs uh, to. Oh, which, which is a fair play because. Now, uh, if you look at it, uh, letting your two black hero die at the first lane might not be that the, bad, right? The, that bad. Yeah, because the game be deployed, right? Yeah, but the thing is, now, uh, mom can push the first lane. 
you have two derbies which hits really hard, and you look at his hand, uh, two cowards a night, which means oh, uh, yeah. he can move the Winter Wyvern from the middle lane to the first lane. Yeah, and he has Thunder Heights as well, which he can yeah, play and, now. and Thunder Heights. And he can, he can even use it to block Bristleback and, and kill Bristleback actually. And, he, and the thing is Nazgul has no equipment to support Bristleback, so if he plays Thunder Heights, he can just kill off Bristleback. So, based on, based on our Nazgul hand, uh, I don't know, Mom's hand, uh, he's really afraid of, of getting lethal. But he, he has a lot of creeps to block, so it's fine for him. And he has Winter's Curse. Yeah, what, what, would, he, what would be the best play here for Mom to you know, make sure he doesn't die in this turn? Because dropping the Thunder High in front of the Bristleback, that's one way. Oh, he's... Oh. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, 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 misplay. Misplay. Okay, misplay. <laughs> that's all his mana. He cannot yeah, that's anything else. <laughs> Alright, I think he might just have uh, threw, threw the game away. <laughs> yeah, he might have just thrown the game away. Okay, yeah. so wow. does, does he have enough damage for, for Nazgo to kill him off? Okay, three creeps. He has Legion Standard Bearer for another four. Uh, it's it's a really lethal, right? For, lethal. for, for Nazgo. We still back to yeah, the there's, there's no way. Nothing else you can do because no. it's, it's full of damage into the I mean, night, for night the, For the right lane, for the right lane. For the right lane. Uh, maybe not this turn. Yeah, this, the creeps blocking. Maybe next turn. You have two heroes coming. Yeah. So I think Nazgul for, will not win this turn. <laughs> so this round, yeah. It feels like because Nazgul has no way to clear the melee creeps on the right right lane. These two melee exactly. creeps. Exactly. Uh, in, this, in this turn, which makes... Uh, his life very really difficult. So this turn he can play a uh, Legion Standard Barrier on the right lane, and that's basically it. And maybe combat yeah. combat training. <laughs> to yeah, he could have brought it down to five HP. Why poise to strike? He's not, he's not gonna commit. And the poise to strike, uh, I probably best use on the right lane. Yeah, right. why did he do that? He used it on the left lane. No, he, he, sure. yeah, he used it on Mazzy. It's like, why? He didn't even kill Omni Knight. So now you can, on the right lane, you can... Uh, so he's moving the Winter Wyvern to... Yep, to probably the, right. the right, right lane. Yeah, right lane, that's yes, correct. To defend, yeah, he probably have to defend. Yeah, uh, which makes life a little bit harder for Nazgul. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think I think Mum should have definitely placed the Thunder Hide in front of... Uh, of but I think maybe what Mom is thinking of is he wants to put the Thunder Height uh, to push the lane. I don't know. I, I, I don't. I don't get it. I am not too yeah, sure I, about this play. I, it feels like Nazgul is not doing the math in his head. Yeah, totally <laughs> agree. It's like he's taking eight damage. He had five half, and he just put three armor. Yeah, and still that, and still lost Sven at either way. So yeah. So okay. Okay. <laughs> we have player of all range here. Yeah, so I'm not, we're not too sure who's you know how good some of these players are. So we we just you know randomly spectating like, like, like a game. So it might you know end up just being that place all around. But yeah. So you put sniper in the first lane and dive to the, yeah, the last lane. on the right. Yeah, that's probably the best. Yeah, because you want to assassinate cross lane. Uh, you you want to defend your first lane as well. True, true. Oh wait, there's nothing in the assassinate. Sorry, my bad. The guy, the, the guy died. You can assassinate uh, the, Omni Knight. The, Omni Knight or, or Drow. Yeah. Omni Knight. <laughs> probably not Drow. Uh, the, the, the middle lane is not pushing fast enough. Yeah, but just to remove the uh, plus one damage, you know, because. Hmm. Okay. Punch. Huh, okay. So. He has no um, initiative here uh, for Nazgul, so. Nothing that he can do. He can just he play. Better hope. He better Lucky for him. Lucky for him, mom doesn't have a uh, gust. Yeah. If if it's gust, it, it's GG. If it gust, then it's just locked out. Okay. So what what can we do here? So. Uh, he has sucker punch. Yeah. Oh, he's oh. gonna assassinate Omni Knight. Okay. Oh, you assassinate Omni Knight and you chump block the Debbie with the, assass the apprentice. Yeah, I think that's one way, one way to go about it. And Mom can throw the no accident, ha the hammer, to remove the blocker. So he's dealing 15 damage here. 
This deployment yeah. is weird. This deployment is weird. They both like gave up on the right lane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so on the next turn, Mom probably can 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 uh, deploy right with his two black heroes. Exactly. And yeah. Possibly yeah. take the right right lane. Yeah, because next turn he uh Nazgul only has Sven. Yeah, so Yeah, I think I think Nazgul made a mistake a few turns back by, you know, giving up right lane. Uh I'm not too sure about this. I'll probably uh no no accident. The first the the SSC apprentice from Nazgul pushes for nine. And yeah, and then you for Mom, I mean, no accident the all oh, right. Yeah, yes. the, the assassin apprentice. Yeah. Yeah, pushes for extra nine, uh, which is very significant. Yeah, he's getting a lot of value for this um, Mazzy on the left lane though. Yeah, the that's true. Nice the the, 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 true, ar true, true. the armor. Five armor. Five eight armor. Eight wow. <laughs> Five armor. Let's see, he just doesn't die. Okay. Oh, okay. So he's gonna continue continuously clock the middle lane. I think that play. Uh, that play, I I don't I don't really like it because uh, you give up initiative for for the first lane, yeah, for the first yeah. lane, and that heal that basically is not doing anything because your hero is not uh, your staff is not dying. Yeah, there's, there's oh wow, no, mom only no has seven like seconds Q2. left. Seven what? Mom only has seven seconds left on his clock. Okay, so yeah, so we we have to pay pay. Close atten attention to that. Yes, so, and Nazgul only has less than one minute, so both of them are running out of time. So one, <laughs> one, one extra minute will be added to this round. Yes, but it's still they're both running out of time. Yeah, so yeah, Mom deployed right, uh, which is which I think it's the correct play. Yeah. And Nazgul, de Nazgul deployed right as well. But I do wonder, is it a li little too late to push right for Nazgul? Yeah, he just have to. I think he has to focus on the left and just make sure that his uh, right lane doesn't die right now. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. Middle lane will be will be pushed in. Few turns. Not fast yes. enough. Four turns. Four turns. <laughs> <laughs> so David going right. Yes. Okay. Right, yeah. So that that's a right play. Yep, oh, but yep. the arrow though. Ah uh, yes, arrow on the, the arrow though. Kind of sad. <laughs> that was bad. What yeah, but, a bad. Yeah, but he can. Uh, what he can do is he can no accident. He can either no accident, double no accident on the creep, or no accident with the kinfo musket to kill the creep. And yep. I believe that will be actually lethal. Yeah, yes, I look. Yeah, that is lethal. So I think if mom can do that play, it will be lethal. And what about what, what? What can Nazgul do to counter that? He has one charm blocker. Nothing. Nothing. He can block yeah, one yeah. one thing. Yeah, one. Uh, you can vision standard bearer now. <laughs> uh, That's the only play. He can block uh, can eleven block damage. One. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I. I think. I think. Uh, Mom is gonna do do, do that line of play. Uh, so I think musket. The musket is the oh, battle. Na yep. Nasu yep. just gave up. Did he? Yeah. He, he could have survived if he dropped the. Oh, he still can actually. He still can. He still can. He's just letting. Uh, he's just letting mom do the action first. Wait, what? Oh, there you go. Yeah. I think that it would <laughs> never be enough. So the right play here is to put the Oglody first, and then you fly your Winter Wyvern. Right. That's it. That that is lethal. No, the arrow. Oh, the arrow. <laughs> oh no, man, but, the arrow. But you can fly Winter to the left. Fly Winter left. Yeah, fly Winter left, which ensures the lethal. Fly Winter left. I'm not sure if he sees it. Maybe he didn't. Does it. Oh, there you go. The right is not. Oh. Yeah. Uh, All right. Arrow. Okay. <laughs> That's it. Oh, that was lucky, man. I mean, if the arrow, he should have went left. That was that was that was a risky play. All right, cool. That's GG for uh, Mom. So Mom took the game. Then let's let, let, let's look at the other. Uh... Okay, that's fine. There's only one game, a few more games going on. Uh, let's go to the Jubar and Atiban game. Yeah, let's take that. Check it out. Oh, many people has finished already. Let's go yeah. spectate. So that was a pretty long game. Yeah, it was a pretty long game. It's long. It was long. I think it was definitely longer than it should have been. And this game, it's looking to be even longer. <laughs> because <laughs> the, game, the game is not ending anytime soon. So it's, it's a red, blue, splash green, and a red, 
blank slash blue. <laughs> that's just very. Those are interesting decks. And look at. And let's look at the decks. Look at Juba's hero. Okay, Juba has has X. X. <laughs> he and is he favorite knight. He's winning all three lanes. Yeah, he's a hit. Yeah, so I think yeah, Juba is probably gonna take this. This is proof that X is OP. <laughs> Well, and the deck for Artibans is the I would say the red the red cards are a bit weak. Beside the heroes, you have two robot instigator, one Smilo arms master, one Augur random. Solder. It's random, yeah. So just why just, yeah why did he double red? I think looking at screen, he it might have been better to just double green. Yeah, it's hard to say, right? Because Bristol back. I mean, yeah, it depends, gen- depends on what he drafted, I guess. But the, what he played is some of the stronger green cards. Yeah. Legion yeah, and Bristol back. And and you know what, Jub uh Artibans has Glyph of Confusion. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird What a weird card to play. Has he played it yet though? Uh actually it's hard to see from the deck tracker because uh it doesn't tell us uh, the cards that you played before we join. So it yeah. only tracks the state that after we join. So looking at it, no, he hasn't played it yet. So Riff. let's see. All right. For Juba, is it game this turn? Can he kill Artiban this turn? He has Thunder God. Probably not. No, actually. probably not. His co- middle is so. He can, he can coop somebody. It could be very some. Could be grab some somebody and. Yeah, he might be able to. Yeah, he yeah. can coop uh, Jumui. I think he should coop Jumui because. Blue, you know, normally blue is like the dangerous one. Yeah. Although at this mana, you might want to cool green because of the big minions. So exactly in his hands, he has all the minions. So it's a friendly. Okay, oh. that clears up the Zeus. Okay, so okay. now now you now you read Artiban's deck, right? So what what can he play in five mana? So you, you if you look at the deck, all the creeps for green are are very heavy. Yes, um, eight heavy. and nine. So if you cook. Trian, uh, cook the no the Jimoy, uh, the creeps that Artiban can play is low sleep. Okay. And cool. thunder height. Uh, yeah, but Artiban can block with the yeah sailor game. magician. Yeah, the magician. True, true, true. And he can actually play another creep. Oh no, he lost the he lost the three. Never mind. Okay. Oh. Can, oh. Is that it? He can refresh the mana and play a bunch of stuff again. Yep. So, but he, he doesn't have though. another creep. He can, he can draw. He can draw. He can draw first. You can draw from Jomoy yeah. first. You draw from Jomoy first, definitely. He can add any cost. But no, doesn't, ki- that doesn't kill the yeah, green. doesn't kill anything. No. Yeah, draw. He still has Eclipse as well. Yeah, see, clearing out the green was a good one because you, you, know, you, you don't have all this big minion coming in. Jomoy draw uh, doesn't reach anything. So you can dual the bandy, yeah. There you go. Dual is a kill. Okay. Looks like he's holding on for another round. There's no more plays that uh, Juba can do. Ah uh, yes. Kill. He also has better field control, right? Right. Here, what do you play? One. And one for me for bling dagger. Oh, hey, that's a value. That's a good value. That very good. Yeah, value of playing. You and pump, emissary. Pump nice. emissary. I'm uh, not too sure about equipping the Blink Dagger here. I guess uh, it's good in... Yeah? Oh, he just wants to clear the PA. Okay. Uh, that's, that's fair, that's fair. That's fair, that's fair, yeah. yeah. Keep, keeps him alive for a bit longer. Wow, that, that was some turn. That was a turn. <laughs> he basically cleared out Juba's whole board. Except X, you know, X is indestructible. I think the game is not ending anytime soon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Far from over. Far from over. Far from over. Right now, uh, Artibans is uh, pushing what, 20 damage to the mid lane. And the left lane, he, he's winning the left lane. Yeah, because with left lane is nothing there. So can he win? Can he can he win left lane this turn? Nah, mm, nah. He has no. He has no green. Can't no. drop anything. Yeah, you just poison STD here. Smash the defense on the field reinforcement and push for. Or you can just play the yeah. uh, de magic king ball. Get rid of the uh, for reinforcement. 
His hand is really full. Wow. Leave our confusion to the first first lane. Oh wow, and his and his eclipse have seven charges. You know so what? You can see that. Yeah. Look at second lane. If the X points straight, and Juba has enough magic in his hand. Ah oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, too bad for him. Unlu unlucky, unlucky uh, arrow deployment. Yeah. True, true, yeah. Enough magic would have... Uh, <laughs> enough and magic with a straight arrow would have... And he would have, uh, he would have initiative as well. Yeah. Exactly, arrows indeed. Exactly, he has initiative. But now the arrow though. <laughs> that RNG arrow. Uh, he's just gonna... <laughs> just yep, yep. Yeah, I, I would say, I would say, I would say that that's a decent play. That's fair. Just to, just to force, prevent anything from happening. I think here you might, yeah, you might want to blink the dagger up. But I guess a uh, blink dagger can be saved on to play on the hero on the first lane, so you can play it on the first lane and blink it to the second lane. Yeah. Now okay. He has so three hero drops. Is he, is he gonna go triple mid? Yep, he is. Yeah, that's his only. Trying way. to push that little. He can. And green is back though. Green is back. So can he draw a coup? Can he draw a coup? I think. And yeah, I think coal is not enough because I think eclipse. It's probably a clear everything, almost. And Arctic Benz is if Arctic Benz is smart, he should keep initiative. Yeah, just you don't play, just don't play. Just pass, just pass Arctic Benz. Keep initiative. Yeah, that's yeah, good. That's right. Good. All right, so Arctic Benz has pushed his lane already. Good, good. So now it's just it's just the middle lane. So what's the what's the outs for Juba? Uh, oh, 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 Vandal. Yeah, Oglody Vandal would <laughs> win him. <laughs> oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. PA has to survive. He has to kill PA. He yeah. has to kill PA now. He has to kill PA, but can he kill PA though? That's the thing. Eclipse is... Eclipse is not enough to kill PA. Uh, no, it, has, it, uh, depends on, it depends on... It depends on the... RNG. RNG. Oh, uh, he, no, he, he healed. just lost here. GG. GG. <laughs> GG. Okay, uh, wow. That was an interesting game. Uh, yeah. That oh, was a lot, a lot closer than it would have, it would have looked when we first came in. Exactly. Yeah. It's like oh, oh, glory OP, kind of nerf.